Greetings peeps, my name is Fanglyfish coming back at you with some more Midnight Club 2. Now in the last race against Ian, uh, we actually won a motorcycle, which I considered using, but then I figured, you know what, the traffic in Paris has been enough of a pain in the ass already, and I'm really not that much of a masochist, so... Our next challenger is Farid, I believe it's pronounced, and he's actually the last person you face before you race the champion of Paris. And uh, he's from Algeria, so the kind of Arabic part of the world, and he's probably the most racist character in this game, because y y you just know, with, with the kind of cultural sensitivity that this game has approached everything else, somebody from like the Arabic part of the world is just going to be, well... Yeah. This is where I belong, high up on the infidels. Infidels, yeah. Bloody Ahmed the not dead, still alive, possibly terrorist over here. I mean, it's explicitly stated that this guy is a criminal. You know, they, they don't use the T word, but it, you know, it's implied. And here we are. He looks too young to be a cop. I will give him the honor of racing an internationally renowned fugitive. I have to keep a low profile. Oh wow, those ears. Holy crap, man. You call yourself a man? My camel takes bigger dumps than you. C camel, yeah. <laughs> Arab guy owns a camel, of course. I forgot to burn out, that's okay. Oh jeez, okay then. Friggin' out of the way. Up. Yeah. Alright, so this is tight quarters, so I don't know, maybe the motorbike would have been a good idea. Cause not too lot of room to maneuver. Okay, oh alright. Okay, this car, it was really good in the race against Ian, but it does not seem to turn very well. Ow. Okay. That's alright, that's alright. We were dodging. We are okay. <sighs> Don't call me an infidel. Hey man, how about a little tolerance for other people's cultures? You know? Show this tolerance for other people's cultures that the makers of this game obviously did not show. Uh, okay, I did not see him on the map because he was quite literally right on top of me. Come on. Come on. Make it, make it, make it, make it, make it. Made it. Oh no! Ah, oh, crud. Well, we came close, but we flipped at the end. So, um, yeah. You know, I've changed my mind. I actually think that the motorbike would be good on this sort of a course. Alright, hopefully running into these pipes won't knock me off the bike, because that would suck. Yep, there we go. Okay. Yeah. Super dodge. Oh, jeez. Okay. Oh, ah. Uh, okay. Ah, man. Going through the skull walls again. <laughs> that, that still is creepy as hell. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. We are going really fast. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> It's just like room full of giant pillars. It's just like I just know that that it's going to suck. <laughs> oh, friggin' hell, man! Are you trying to kill me? He probably is trying to kill me. You know, take out the competition, then he wins by default. Oh Jesus Christ! Oh why? <laughs> why did I choose the bike? Why did I think this was a good idea? <laughs> Oh god, oh frickin'. <laughs> I make it through the room with all the obstacles only to wipe out in the perfectly straight tunnel, of course. <sighs> I mean, even for even for a motorbike, this thing just turns like crap. I mean, I swear, the last what and the game just crashed!
great, so you don't have to see any more of me completely making an idiot out of myself. That's lovely. Alright, we are back, and this time we are actually using something that can turn worth a damn. The Allard. I think the key... The key to doing well in Paris is to know which car to use for each race. Ow. Because the first time I played through Paris, I would try to basically beat a race repeatedly using the same car, and it would take me forever just because the car was not well suited to the race, but this time around, I know better, so as a result, I've been beating the races a lot more quickly. Alright, this is already going significantly better because the Allard, not terribly fast, but it is incredible with its handling. Boost the jump, don't flip over this time. And we made it. Er, okay, there we go. He is lucky I don't steal everything he has right from underneath his big fat American nose. My nose is fat. Your nose, your nose, your nose is pretty sizable yourself. You know that. The eyebrows, the haircut. This guy looks friggin' comical. Oh boy. Yep. Yep. And of course, he brings the heat to us. Losing the cops should not be too... Ow. Actually, well, to be honest, if I'm going to be losing the cops, I would ideally want to have something faster. Ow. The Lard, uh, it turns extremely well. It's very controllable, but it's not very fast, so... Ugh. Just gonna have to, like, try to make tight turns and stuff. Nice. Lost him around that corner. Okay. Aw, oh, crap, they're on the map. Aw, oh, damn it. So the cops don't disappear after you lose them. They stay in the same spot, so going back the way I came, probably not such a great idea. Ah, oh, for freaking goodness sake. There we go, okay. Now let's get here before I stumble across more by accident. There we go. Okay, one car. Nice. And uh there's still there's still one one thing left we have to do. It will be a work of genius. I give him my automobile, and the inspector will be busy trying to pitch him. Enjoy the car! Yeah, so basically, he gives us his car to distract the police from himself. So, yeah, he's kind of a dick like that. But you know what? Free car. Can't complain. So now we're facing some um, British police detective dude. Hey everybody, it's Fangly Fish. I just want to say thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe if you want to see more, and stay tuned for more Midnight Club 2 and other Let's Plays.